guys, it's Rachel. Today I'm going to be doing a foundation first impression slash review and I'm sure you already know by the title I'm going to be looking at the Bourjois Happy Light Foundation. I used this recently in a Get Ready With Me video and a lot of you guys asked to know what I thought about it so I thought I would do a review. I've actually only used it once which was in that video and I didn't pay much attention to how it wore so I'm going at it again. It's kind of like with fresh eyes and I'm going to just tell you guys what I think about it. I'll give you the facts about the foundation, show me applying it and then I will go away, go about my day and come back and show you guys how it wore by the end of the day. So firstly the foundation itself is a new offering from Bourjois. There are five colours in total, four of which are available in Australia. We usually do have a limited selection. In the smaller bourgeois stands, the skinnier ones that are about the size of a say an essence stand, you'll find three shades which is 52, 53 and 54. I have shade 52 here which is light beige or beige clair. In the larger bourgeois stands, the ones that are similar to say a Maybelline stand, the double size, you'll find the four shades which, is fifth, which includes number 51 which is lighter. If you are pale, I would recommend looking for that lighter shade. And if that's still not pale enough, then I would suggest going online to potentially ASOS to look for shade 50, which is the lightest in the range. What Bourjois says about the foundation is that this will give you a luminous and flawless complexion in any light. It has translucent pigments. It corrects without masking. It is a light enhancer. It says it has eight hours hydration. And then if we look at the bottle, it actually says it has 16 hours wear, which is quite a lot. It has a flexible texture and is dermologically tested. So it is supposed to be a lightweight foundation. The stand or the little blurb at the stand said that it was supposed to be up to medium coverage with a natural skin like finish and it is supposed to be luminous. Looking at the bottle itself, it has quite nice packaging. I like the colouring. You do get 30 mils, and it comes with a pump which I love. It automatically gets a thumbs up from me. It is a glass bottle so you do have to be aware that if you're applying this standing up in a bathroom or something like that, that if you drop it, it will likely shatter and you will lose your product or if you're traveling things like that you just have to be a little bit more careful. I'm going to apply one pump to begin with. You do get a fair amount. It is definitely a standard liquid foundation texture. As you can see it's running down my hand. It's not quite as liquidy as say something like the Chanel Vita Lumiere Aqua but it's definitely a thinner formula than say a mousse or a cream foundation. I'm going to start by trying to apply it with my Real Techniques Expert Face Brush. I've just zoomed you in so you guys can see what's going on a little bit better. I take a little bit on my brush and just start applying. Initially I can see that it does feel really quite nice, quite smoothing on the skin. There's no drag when I sort of rub my brush along my face. There is a scent to the product. I can smell it. It's quite similar to the standard bourgeois scent if you've ever smelled any of their foundations before. I find it quite pleasant. It probably only affect you if you are really, really sensitive to scent. It does seem to be blending into my skin quite well without streaking. I do think if you've had a dirty brush or a brush that wasn't very soft, you may get a little bit of streaking with the product because it is a fairly thin formula. So there is one layer from one pump. Looking at it, I would say that it has a light to light medium coverage. You can still see my active blemishes, any kind of red spots on my face. It has evened out my skin tone and covered some sort of light redness around my nose. I can still see sort of little marks on my face. So I might go in with a second pump and try applying that with a sponge. This is the Real Techniques sponge, which I'm currently testing out as well. So if you'd like to see more about this definitely let me know in the comments but I'm gonna go in I might go about half a pump and just see how this goes building up so I'm just gonna dab it on spots where I need a little bit more coverage and already I can see that that is giving me some extra covering up qualities <laughs> It 
doesn't look cakey. I do really, really like the finish thus far. It seems to be quite natural on the skin. It may be a little bit hard to tell because I do have both natural and artificial lights on me. So if you see sort of any shiny spots, it's probably the light. But in real life, it does look a lot like natural skin in terms of the finish. It's not what I would call a dewy finish and it's definitely not what I would call a matte finish. I would probably say that this is definitely close to a satin finish or a demi matte. It is one of the most natural looking foundations that I own on my skin. So there we are, that is with a second half a pump and going in with a sponge. I think that's definitely given some more coverage. It doesn't seem to have caked up. It seems to have been quite smoothing over my pores. I do have uh, enlarged pores around my nose and, and I guess um, blocked pores and things like that and it seems to have covered that fairly well. I still feel like I see my natural skin through the product which I quite like. I would go in with a little bit more concealer over my blemishes but I find that that's fairly standard for foundations and I would prefer to do that rather than put more foundation or a heavier coverage foundation because that's when your skin would start to look cakey and it would take away from the really natural finish of this. I do feel that it is not necessarily dewy but illuminated in some ways. I feel like my skin doesn't look flat. It definitely looks like there's a glow coming out of it but it doesn't look wet or dewy like some foundations can leave. It does feel like it's set. Like I don't feel tacky or sticky. I don't feel like there's I really don't feel like there's much product on my face at all and there doesn't seem to be a lot of transfer either which is good considering I've only just applied it and it does feel really lightweight which is another big thumbs up in my opinion. So they are my initial thoughts on the foundation. I am going to go in and finish off the rest of my makeup. The line does come with a primer, both a mattifying primer and an illuminating primer. I have the mattifying primer so if you'd like to hear more about that I will do that in a separate video or I'll add some more information in the description box below but I want to go primer free just to see how it wears. I will add some concealer and I will powder down one side of my face just to see if that makes a difference. I also want to mention that the line does come with a concealer. I believe that there are two shades available here in Australia but I don't have that to try at this time. So there we are. Thanks to the magic of editing, I now have a full face of makeup on. I will include a list of all the products I used in the description box below so make sure you check that out. I did keep the powdering light and only to this side of my face just to see how the foundation wears with a little bit of powder but I didn't want to cover up the luminosity that it had so I only kept my concealing quite light as well because I wanted to see how it holds up against the oiliness of my skin and my blemishes and things like that. So I will check back in with you guys in a few hours time. So I'm back, I'm in a really really glow so I apologise for that but I want you guys to be able to see it is now 1.38 which means it's been about 4 hours since I applied the foundation. And I actually have a magnifying mirror here so I can see sort of really up close how my skin looks because I know that the camera can distort it a little bit. I think on camera you can see that I'm a little bit glowy. My own sort of oils are starting to show through a little bit but not so much that I feel the need that I actually have to powder my skin. On my actual skin, it's still wearing quite well. It still seems to be covering up. It doesn't look cakey. I can see it a little bit more on my skin, if that makes sense. Like, I can kind of see where the foundation is, sort of in relation to my other products. But overall, I wouldn't be embarrassed for people to see my skin up close. And I'm looking at it quite magnified. In a normal mirror, my skin looks pretty much almost exactly the same as when I first applied the foundation so it's held up quite well I haven't done anything too strenuous I have been filming for the last four hours and I've had quite hot lights on me so that I probably sweated a little bit so that's probably where any kind of wear in my foundation has come from but I am going to go and I'll check back in with you towards the end of the day to see how their foundation is lasting Okay, so it's just after 7 o'clock, which is just under 10 hours since I applied the foundation originally. You can definitely see that my oiliness has start to come through. It doesn't seem to have made much difference about um, the side of where I put the powder versus the side that I didn't put the powder. The ex outside part of my face is looking quite good. It looks slightly dewy, but really it's not that oily. I can see a little bit of wear over my blemishes, they seem to have come 
through a little bit. Um, the foundation has worn away. And it has gone a little bit cakey around some of my dry patches that I have just here around my mouth. But overall, I think it has worn quite well for 10 hours. I definitely still have foundation on my face. And I just want to see how it goes if I apply a little bit more now. How it goes with the, the topping up, you would say. So I've got a little bit on the back of my hand. I think because this is such a light formula, it seems to allow you to add products and add layers without sort of caking up too much. You can see it has worn a little bit away underneath my eyes, a little bit of the shadows under my eyes are, are coming through. But putting that over the top, it seems to sort of wear quite nicely. Looking at it in my magnified mirror, it still looks quite nice and this mirror shows everything. Every pore, every streak, every freckle, every mark, every blackhead, everything. So if it looks okay in this, then it definitely looks okay to the naked eye. If I pop a little bit of powder on top on my nose, that seems to take away a fair amount of the shine that it has. So overall, I could probably go out now and continue to wear this foundation for the rest of the night. I'm not going out. I'm actually going to have a shower and get ready for bed. But I just wanted to show you guys how it ended up looking in the end. Overall, the Bourjois Happy Light Foundation gets a thumbs up from me. In terms of pros, it felt lightweight on the skin. It had a nice natural finish, not too dewy, not too matte. I liked the packaging, the pump and everything was quite nice, quite easy to use. It was blendable and I just overall liked the finish that it had on my skin. I feel like it wore quite well. It didn't break down too badly even though it had to put up with my oils and I think that if I applied it over a mattifying primer and powdered it, it probably would have lasted even longer. In terms of the cons, I would say that it is definitely light light medium to maybe medium maximum coverage so if you are looking for a high coverage foundation then this one probably isn't for you it also only has four shades this is the second lightest so if you're very very pale you may find it difficult to find a shade and if you're a fair bit darker than me then I would say that you'd probably find it difficult to find the right shade for you I do have oily acne prone skin with a few dry patches due to the fact that I'm treating that acne and it seemed to work fine on my face. I think because of the hydrating properties in it, it would work nice on dry skin as well. And combination skin, it seemed to hold up against my oily skin. If you had really, really overall oily skin, then maybe this one might not be for you. You might need to go for something that has a little bit more mattifying properties. But I do think it's a good all-rounder foundation. It felt nice on the skin. And I will definitely continue to use it. One last thing that I wanted to mention, which is... Potentially a con for the product is the price. It is $29 here in Australia. I believe it's around £11.50 in the UK. So we do have, even with the dollar exchange, a little bit of a markup. $29 is on the expensive side for a drugstore foundation, but it is a really, really nice one. It is a fairly typical price for bourgeois products here in Australia. So it's not that much of a shock, but it is definitely on the pricey side. Despite the price, I would still recommend giving it a go if you're looking for a nice light to medium coverage foundation that feels nice on the skin and wears quite well. So that's it. That's the end of my first foundation review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what I did well, what you think that I would like to add to these type of videos in the comments below. Also ask any questions for things that I may not have covered because I'm sure I've forgotten something because like I said, I don't do this very often. If you would like to see more videos like this, please let me know as well and I will try and do them for you. Other than that, I'm gonna go. I hope you guys are all having a fantastic day and I will see you all later. Bye. And I will walk right to the sky.